So today, I'm gonna to show you how you can grow your own mutant cacti from seed. Now, you can sow thousands or even tens of thousands of cactus seeds and never once end up with a crested or monstrous plant. So how do we shorten those odds? We have to ensure that we're sowing seeds that come from a parent plant that has a genetic disposition to creating mutant children. How do you know if that's the case? I've done the hard work for you. Now, there are many mutant cacti on the market, but without a doubt, the plant that most frequently creates mutant children is a hybrid plant called Trichocereus peruvianus monstrosus, often called TPM. This is a plant that will almost always create up to 50% even more mutant children, mutant seedlings when sown. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is get your hands on some TPM seeds. There are lots of vendors out there. They're not always cheap. Once you've got your seeds, then it's a pretty straightforward process, which I'm gonna show you today. Now, what do we actually need to grow these fantastic cactus mutants? Obviously, we're gonna need our seeds, all right? These are a TPM hybrid. We need a pot loaded with our choice of seed raising mix. I'm using a mix of smaller particles. The base of it is a store-bought seedling mix. I've included some crushed granite, some zeolite, some smaller particles of pumice. There's some vermiculite in here. The mix itself isn't overly important. These things will germinate really in any medium. It's really about rate of growth that you'll produce afterwards. This works for me, but something else might work for you. And then you're gonna need a plastic baggie or some other sort of container that will maintain a humid and moist atmosphere. We're creating a microclimate suited towards cactus germination. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna surface sow those seeds on the pot, place it inside this, Give it a bit of light, a bit of heat, and off we go. So let's give that a try. Try and give your seedlings a little bit of space. We're going to transplant them anywhere between six months and a year, depending on the rate of growth and how eager you are to give them an individual pot. So a little bit of space to grow into is best. I'm putting about 20 seeds into this pot today, but... Uh, you know, you can do more, you can do fewer. And then we take our pot, place it into our plastic bag, seal it up. We haven't put any top dressing over the top of the seeds. That's because cactus seeds, generally speaking, are what we call phytosensitive, meaning they need light in order to germinate. So if we bury them, germination rates will be lower. Humidity will be maintained by this plastic bag. Some people use takeaway containers. Uh, there are other ways of doing this, but this generally works for me. We're gonna place this in a well-lit position, but out of direct sun. Direct sun will cook these plants. In, in the wild, generally cactus seedlings grow in the shade protected from the harshest light of day. And so we're gonna try and replicate that. Now, it's almost winter where I'm growing these. So these are gonna go onto a heat mat. If I was doing this in spring, the heat mat wouldn't necessarily be required. Put these onto a heat mat. And after about seven days, maybe up to two weeks, we'll notice these starting to germinate. They're gonna stay in the bag for upwards of two to three months when I'll slowly start to expose them to a less humid environment, opening the bag gradually. We're gonna slowly, over about a period of a week, expose them to more and more light. This is a process called hardening off. And then after that, they're going to receive 
regular watering, fertilizing, and the rest of it to try and promote some really rapid and strong growth. I'm gonna show you an example of what they look like after a few months. Now, these plants here are about four or five months old. I'll give you a close up, but you can see already some of these plants here, even at a young stage, are growing with crests. There's another one in the middle here that's got some monstrose characteristics. Not all the plants will come up as mutants. However, if you get the right seeds with that genetic disposition towards mutation, you can have some fantastic plants over time. Some of these plants may not actually show those mutated traits until much later. They might be a large, tall plant growing in an ordinary fashion, and then one day start doing strange and wonderful things. So you never quite know. However, you can see with the right seeds and the right care, you can start growing some wonderfully strange plants even from a very young age. Now a word of warning, seed sellers online are cowboys. There are a lot of them out there who will sell you anything, all sorts of scams. If you've seen my video about plant mutation, cactus mutation, you would have heard me talk about how many of these mutant cacti are quite sterile. So be wary of anyone offering you seeds from a Eulichnia castanea varus viralis or a Matilla cactus geometrizans fuku roku ryu zinboku, the booby cactus. Um, even something like the Trichocereus bridgesii monstrosus. These are plants that do not flower and therefore they do not produce seeds and therefore they can't be reproduced in this way. So like I said, if you really want to dip your toes into the world of growing mutant cacti from seeds, a good starting place, uh, TPM. You won't find pure TPM seeds. They'll always be crossed with something else. They've got some very interesting and strange names but TPM X something, you've got a good chance. Anyway, hopefully you've learned something interesting today. Hopefully now you can go out and produce some strange and wonderful mutant cacti. Happy growing, and I'll catch you next time.